Okay, good morning everybody. My name is Ruchith and I'm here to tell you about Kushi Baby. So Kushi Baby means happy baby in Hindi and we want happy and healthy babies around the world. So we hope that they can get vaccinated. And what we do is we marry tradition with technology to bridge the world's vaccination gap. So let's start with this number, one and a half million. One and a half million children under the age of five die each year from vaccine preventable disease. This may be a number that you're all familiar with. 500,000 of these children are in India alone. We have vaccines, so why are these kids not getting vaccinated? Well, that's a great question. UNICEF tried to answer this by interviewing over 10,000 mothers in back in 2009. What they found was striking, that there are both factors on the supply side as well as factors on the demand side that can predict why certain communities go under immunized. And in the places that we're working in Rajasthan, India, we get responses on the demand side with mothers saying things like, I didn't really feel the need for vaccines or I didn't really know what their importance was. And if you combine, with, combine this with the fact that the literacy rate can be under 20%, the fact that the child needs 10 vaccines in the first year of life at a particular schedule, the fact that the mother has to hold on to a government issued health card for two years during pregnancy and then after the child is born, things can get quite difficult. And to really understand what's going on, you have to see what the population looks like. What is the population at risk? So this is what we imagine, a child getting vaccinated by oral polio virus. It's a oral polio vaccine, and it's a great thing. And then the health worker is going to be recording that this event took place. But there's a lot of complexity that undergirds this whole thing. It starts with a social health activist in the left, bottom left corner going door to door reminding mothers to come into the, to the daily camp, the, the camp that happens on that day. The health worker has to travel over an hour on bike in order to reach the campsite in the village. Followed by that, the mother has to leave her daily wage earning job or her agricultural job to come with child in hand, walking on average for about half an hour to reach this campsite which is really just a roof outside of a building. And the mother may have to wait there for a couple of hours, present her paper card, which probably is not filled out because the health worker didn't have enough time to fill it out. And the health worker has to guess, was your child born before or after the harvest in order to know which vaccine to give? So it's not really that simple. And there are several barriers. There's different ways to cut at this. But the barriers that we see and that we're trying to address are around awareness and data. Uh, first, mothers really don't know the importance of vaccines. We already mentioned that earlier. But second, we don't even know which kids are going unvaccinated or partially vaccinated. There's no good data, especially at the last mile. So even when the, the India's national health mission is able to get these health, health workers out into the communities and sort of solve some of the access issues, we still have huge uh, issues that we need to work out with awareness and data. And when we're thinking about building a solution, we also have to keep the community in mind. Who is the child that we're trying to vaccinate? What does the mother feel when the child gets vaccinated and sees the baby crying and subsequently sees a mild fever? How will she come back the next time? So we did a uh, scoping work back in 2014 and we got to see what, the, what sort of were the essential components of the vaccination system. Uh, it starts with a government vaccination card given to the mother during pregnancy. There's a log book that the health worker has to flip through. It's, as you can see, very easy for the health worker to reference babies and very easy for them to check against duplicate names. And uh, there's also a health worker, who, uh, a health activist in the community has to go door to door, walking five to 10 kilometers a day, reminding people. So we thought we could you know, bring technology into the picture and uh, change this approach a bit. So instead of a paper card that you have to hold on to, how about something wearable? In this case, it's a wearable digital medical record. Um, it costs less than a dollar, doesn't require a battery, and stores the child's entire health card. Um, the health worker can both read and update the data on the child's vaccine card with a simple tap of their Android device. And when the health worker returns back from the field, they can sync the data to a dashboard that a health administrator can use to follow up, to forecast, uh, and to actually leverage automated voice call reminders going back to these rural communities. So you might be surprised to know that 80% of uh, people in these communities actually have access to a cell phone. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that the necklace has black thread. And why is this important? 
Well, it turns out that the black thread has a, a cultural significance uh, in these communities and communities throughout India and are actually around the world. And the meaning is to protect the child from evil eye or nazar. So what we're doing is we're actually slotting into what culturally already exists uh, to make this into some, something like a campaignable tool. So we're not just concerned with data collection at the last mile, but also bridging that gap in a culturally uh, cognizant way. We had a few research questions. We have this whole system. We've got the necklace. We've got the app. We've got the voice call reminders. We ran a, random, a small randomized control trial over the, over the last year. We had some basic questions, and I'll try to hit uh, what the results were from our first study. Um, we had a three-arm study. We had a control arm in which we gave nothing, basically the paper card. Uh, we had one arm which we gave the necklace, the cushy baby necklace that I just mentioned. And finally, we had the cushy baby necklace plus the voice call reminder system. Uh, and we wanted to see which of these components could actually drive timely immunization in the infant's first year of life through the third DTP vaccine. So our first question, did we, were we actually able to improve immunization adherence? Uh, the answer is no. With our sample of 214 children, we did not have a, a sample size that was significant in order to make these results. That's OK. Um, did we increase overall camp attendance? Were people gossiping about uh, the cushy baby system? Were they gossiping about the necklace? Were more people actually coming into the camps? Uh, did we increase camp attendance? Uh, the answer is we don't have enough evidence. This was a pretty small trial. Um, and there's lots of factors that go into driving attendance. It could be, you know, the healthcare worker. It can be the season. So we really have to study this over a longer period of time. So why am I here telling you about null results? Well, we do have some uh, positive results that are valuable, we think. How well was the medical record retained? So think about it. The, the mother goes through all this effort. The health worker goes through all this effort to get to the campsite. And if the child doesn't have a complete record, how do we know which vaccine to give? It turns out our necklace, something that's wearable, is 5.4 times less likely than the paper card to be lost by the time of the third vaccine. So that's pretty good. What else? Um, we also found that the necklace was well-liked and well-discussed. So compared to the paper card, uh, people will actually, uh, on average, um, talk to about three more people within the community and at home about the necklace. And they had very good favorability ratings around the necklace. Not a single mother out of those 214 actually rejected the necklace. And anecdotally, anecdotally, I can tell you, many of them actually wanted us to take pictures of their child with the necklace. So really what this speaks to is the fact that the necklace still may have some campaignable potential to be used in these communities to generate awareness, that this could be a fashion trend, that this could be something that someone sees Hey, where did you get that for your baby? Oh, I have to go to the immunization camp, and then they can bring their own baby in. So we know that there are lots of things in the development, development sector that are trying to get at immunizations, things like cash incentives, non-cash incentives, bringing immunizations to the doorstep. But we want to think about other ways that we can reach these communities and go past the 70% coverage rates that we see right now. There are many challenges to this study. It was small. It was covered over a small time period. Implementation challenges over, over our first year. Um, and we didn't actually get to see the longer term effects. So are we able to drive behavior change by the time that the child needs to come in at measles? That's an important question that we need to ask. And we're asking that question in an upcoming trial that will be starting in about two months. Uh, we have about a 2,000 cohort sample across 600 villages. It's going to be a randomized trial, and we'll be doing it in the context of the government setting. So we'll be comparing the cushy baby system against the existing government system. We'll have a multi-component intervention that we're testing. And the government system is, is consistent from district to district throughout India. So if we can show good results both around efficacy as well as efficiency of data collection, there's definitely a potential for this to be scaled within the state of Rajasthan where we work, as well as throughout India. Um, we're here to talk about uptake and demand generation. I just want to hit on a few things. We're doing it. We think that you know, there's still a lot of room for creativity when it comes to thinking of how to generate demand. Uh, we gave you the example of the necklace as a social signal. We also have the voice call reminders, which has been well studied. Uh, giving health workers due lists so they know who to actually go uh, and go to the, that person's door and give them an extra reminder. Having better demand forecasting. So this means if somebody comes in and they actually say, I don't want that, that hepatitis shot because my baby's already crying from the DTP shot, you have to actually record that. You can't just leave that blank. 
and our system does capture vaccination denials at the point of care uh, on the part of the mother or on the part of the supplier. And this will actually allow us to better predict the total vaccine demand that are in these communities. Uh, we need to think about social networks, like who are the most important people in these communities? It's the person who's going door to door. And how do we make her life easier? How do we give her more tools? How do we activate sub-networks so that way word of mouth can get going? And finally, we also have to think about starting earlier. We don't start when the infant is born with, that, with uh, trying to get them to adhere to vaccines. We actually have to start during antenatal care, when the mother is coming for pregnancy checkups, regularly scheduled. If we can build in that behavior pattern, that can lead to downstream effects. So I'll just close. Um, sorry for rushing through this. We're having a bit giving campaign. So if you want to get involved, join, and support the cause, go to bitgiving.com slash cushybaby. You'll learn all about our next trial and what we're trying to do. Um, thank you for your time, and that's all I have for right now.